Hi, welcome to a brief tutorial demonstrating how to configure static NAT on a Nexus switch. My name is William Brown, and I am a Nexus Data Center Route Switch Engineer at Cisco. To begin, let's review a quick description of static NAT. Static NAT allows one-to-one -one network address translation using inside and outside NAT interfaces and addresses. For further information on static NAT, please refer to the Nexus 9000 NAT configuration documentation. We'll start out with reviewing the topology. As we can see on the screen, we have three switches. Our center switch will be the switch performing NAT. We will use the switch on the left as a source and the switch on the right as a destination. Please note that the source switch and the destination switch have already been configured and we will only be demonstrating the configuration on the NAT switch during this tutorial. At this time, the switch configuration has been cleared and the switch has been reloaded. We will start with configuring the necessary protocols and the SVIs and loopbacks needed to run this test. We will start with first adding the three required features, the SVI feature, the OSPF feature, and the NAT feature. With these features added, we can now configure OSPF, followed by the SVIs, assigning them to the OSPF process. To complete the non-NAT related configurations, we will configure loopback one and advertise that to the OSPF 10 process, as well as add our VLAN 10 and VLAN 11 configurations to the switch. Now moving on to the static NAT configurations, we will go back to SVI 10 and configure it as our IP NAT inside interface. As we are doing a static inside source translation, the inside interface will be the interface on which the traffic is arriving to the switch. Likewise, we will go to the egress SVI VLAN 11 and configure it as our IP NAT outside interface. Next, we will move back to configuration mode and configure the IP NAT inside source static configuration. We add the configuration, but as you can see, we have hit a TCAM limit. TCAM is a hardware resource and by default, NAT does not have any allocation. To work around this, we can take TCAM resources from an unused region and assign them to the NAT region. In this instance, I'll take 512 entries from the ingress RACL region. Please note, it is best to check your TCAM usage for unused resources and allocate from those regions. We save the running config to the startup config and reload the switch in order for the change to take effect. With the Nexus switch now reloaded, we can go back to configuration mode and re-add the command. Now the command takes effect and we can check the running config for NAT to verify our configuration. With the configuration looking correct, we can begin our lab test. Moving from the NAT switch to the source switch, we can send a ping to the destination switch that will not be NAT translated. To verify this traffic arrives, we will run an ETH analyzer capture at the CPU of the switch. Sending five pings, we can see that five pings arrived and five replies were generated by the destination switch. This traffic was not NAT translated due to it using the SVI address and not the loopback address of the source switch. Moving back to the source switch, we can now send a ping and source it from the loopback one interface on the switch. This traffic should be NAT translated due to the source address being 1.1.1.1. We see the traffic worked and on the destination switch, we now have a new source address matching our NAT statement. The 99 subnet is the correct NAT translation. If we check the NAT switch, we can check NAT translations and see we have one static inside translation. We have now successfully configured static NAT on the center switch. Additionally, we have verified the traffic arrives NAT translated to the destination.